Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to install Adgar Home on a Synology NAS. So Adgar Home is a Pi-hole competitor. They are both network-wide ad blockers and they both do a pretty good job of that. But Adgar Home actually makes a few things easier. So if you're interested in doing something like DNS over HTTPS, it's a lot easier on AdGuard Home than it is on Pi-hole. So we're not going to be going over that in this video. But the reason that I bring it up is because depending on what your use case is, it might actually be easier for you to switch to AdGuard Home from Pi-hole rather than configuring Pi-hole to do exactly what you want. So if you're interested in seeing any of those differences, I have a link in the description with written instructions and I have a uh, a few links that will show you the differences between AdGuard Home and Pi-hole. If you're interested in setting up Pi-hole as well, I have two tutorials on that, so I'll link those in the description as well. So that leaves the big question of what is better, AdGuard Home or Pi-hole? And it's very difficult for anyone to give you an answer, and I'd be very weary of anyone that does give you an answer. They're both good in their own right. They both have their benefits and their downsides. And depending on what you want to use it for, you might find that one is better than the other, but you'll also find that you can configure them both very similarly. So for that reason, it's a good idea to try and compare and contrast them on your own and take some of the information that you read with a grain of salt, because they are both great in their own right, but you should pick what's best for you. So with that out of the way, let's start the tutorial. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to ensure that you have Docker installed. Everything that we're setting up today will run on Docker, so you have to make sure that you have that installed. As soon as Docker is installed, you're going to see that it automatically creates a Docker folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of that uh, Docker folder and we're going to create an AdGuard folder. And inside of that AdGuard folder, we're going to create a configuration folder and a data folder. Now these will be mapped at later times, so you don't have to do anything more than this. So now that that's done, we have to open three ports. You'll have to open port 3000, port 80, and port 53. Port 3000 is for the AdGuard Home setup process. After the setup process is done, you'll be navigating to the AdGuard Home web page using port 80. So that's the default web port. And for that reason, you have to have port 80 open as well. And port 53 is what is used for the DNS requests. So after you finish the setup process, you don't have to keep port 3000 open. If you want to close it, you're free to do that. Now that Docker is fully installed and we created our folders, we're quickly going to look at the network interfaces. So the way that this tutorial is going to be set up, we are going to be creating a Mac VLAN network interface. And what this does is this allows you to have your own IP address for this Docker container. If you don't do it this way, you'd have to use your NASA's IP address. So technically, you don't have to do what we're about to do, uh, and you can just use the host network interface in the Docker configuration steps that we configure later. But the reason I do it this way is because it stops any port conflicts from occurring, and I ensure that the DNS server that I point to at a later step will always be a different IP address than my NAS. So to create that Mac VLAN network interface, what we need to do is we need to SSH into our Synology NAS. If you aren't sure how to do that, I created a video on that, and I'll leave a pop-up for that now. As soon as you get in there, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to run ifconfig, the command ifconfig. When you do that, you're going to get all of the network interfaces that are uh, existing for your Synology. So you need to find the network interface for the internal IP address that your Synology NAS is assigned. So for me, that is ETH0. For you, it might be something different. And you also have to be aware that if you have multiple network interfaces on your NAS, you might have a few IP addresses here. So pick the network interface, and then we're going to move on to the next step, which is creating a Docker Mac VLAN network interface using the name of the Synology's network interface. So I fully acknowledge that I just said network interface like 10 times. But if you read the written instructions or watch what I just did, it'll make a little bit more sense. As soon as that's done, we need to go into the Docker network section and we need to create a bridge network. So I want to quickly explain what this bridge network does. By default, your Synology NAS will not be able to talk with the Mac VLAN network we just created, meaning that if you specify your Synology's DNS server as that Mac VLAN uh, IP address, your Synology NAS will not be able to find that. The way that it finds it is through this bridge that we're about to create. So rather than using that IP address as the DNS server, 
you'd actually have to use this bridge. So to sum it up, if you want to use AdGuard Home as your Synology's DNS server, you have to use the IP address of this bridge network that we just created. After that's done, head over to the registry, search for AdGuard, and then download the latest AdGuard Home image. You should be able to double click it to launch the settings. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a name and then we're gonna select advanced settings. So first, check off the enable auto restart. This ensures that every time your Synology is restarted, this Docker container will automatically start. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the volume section. So those folders that we created earlier have to be mapped to the internal containers folders. In the written instructions, I have the paths that you have to use. So check that out and just write that information in the mount path. When that's done, you can head over to the network section and we're gonna add the two networks that we just created. So the AdGuard network and the AdGuard bridge network, and then you have to remove the default bridge network. This is also the section where I was saying earlier, if you did not create this Mac VLAN network, you can go in and use the host network interface here. So once you do that, AdGuard Home, the setup process at least, is fully done. You can head over to the port settings if you'd like to see that the default port we'll be using is port 3000, but there's nothing that needs to be changed. So you can apply these settings and apply the container so that it creates. You should now be able to open a web browser and go to the Mac VLAN IP address that we created and port 3000, and you should be brought to the AdGuard Home Getting Started page. So if you are, you can select Get Started, and then at the next screen, what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up the uh, interfaces that it's gonna be listening on. So since we created that Mac VLAN network interface, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that specific IP address. So select both of them, the ports can stay as is, and then you can select next. You can now create a username and password, and when you move on to the next screen, it's gonna show you how to configure your devices. So this is actually pretty nice because they give you somewhat detailed instructions on how you can configure your different devices to use this DNS server. But what I normally do, and what I think they recommend, is that you point your router's DNS server to be the IP address that we configured in these settings. So basically, any device that connects to your router, whether it's your phone, your laptops, your computer, whatever it is, everything will automatically now funnel through AdGuard Home. So that's how you kind of blanket apply this DNS server to all of your devices. If you aren't interested in doing that, at this section here, you'll be able to follow the instructions to set your DNS server on your specific device to be pointed to AdGuard Home. After that's done, you'll be brought to the AdGuard Home dashboard. So this is not an AdGuard Home configuration tutorial. Uh, I don't think it necessarily needs that. In the written instructions, I gave a few uh, settings that I think that everybody should walk through, and most of it revolves around setting your upstream DNS servers, how to configure the DNS over HTTPS if you're interested in that. Uh, I also have a link on how you can add a certificate to your AdGuard home so that you can use DNS over HTTPS because if you don't configure a certificate, it will not work properly. So you need to ensure that you do that. So I'm not gonna walk through any of these settings, but I don't wanna leave you in the dark either. So if there is interest for a full AdGuard Home configuration tutorial, leave a comment and I'll try and create something for you guys. I didn't wanna create it because most of these settings are user specific and you're gonna be configuring it to your needs. Uh, but if there is interest for that, I'm happy to create a video for it. So like I said earlier, uh, AdGuard Home is a great alternative to Pi-hole. Whether you don't like Pi-hole or you just want to use something different, this is a great option that does a lot of the same things, but it makes certain tasks a little easier. If you're interested in what I'm doing, I'm going to continue to use Pi-hole. Uh, I've been running AdGuard Home for a few weeks now, and while I really like it and I think that it's great, uh, Pi-hole is kind of totally configured for me. It's set up exactly how I want it set up. And a lot of the stuff that AdGuard Home has that they make easier than Pi-hole, I'm not necessarily going to be using it, and I don't have a real need for it. So that's kind of my personal opinion. If you are using AdGuard Home for the first time and you just stumbled across this video and you are interested in checking out Pi-hole, I will once again leave a link for that in the description. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.